You worked on several projects after Little Miss Sunshine. How come it was Ruby Sparks that made it all the way? Well, you know, as, as you m might imagine, there's so many things that have to come together for a film to really work. And um, Ruby Sparks was really the first time since Little Miss Sunshine where everything lined up. There was the right studio, the right actors, the right script, the right producers. Right budget. You know, it, making a film is so much work. And unless you really feel like you have a chance to do something good, we'd rather wait it out and keep, keep plugging away. So um, it just, it, it all came together, so. And I think it's harder today to make films of this size than ever, or the kind of films we want to make, more personal, character-driven, you know, movies are harder to, to get made. So I think that's part of the reason it took six years. <laughs> but we're, we're proud of this movie, and I'm, I'm glad it, it is the follow-up. It's, it's very different from Little Miss Sunshine, but I think if you liked Little Miss Sunshine, you'll enjoy this. I was going to say that, um, was there a temptation to make the standard Hollywood rom-com, that all the elements were kind of there? <laughs> well, there, 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 no, I mean, I think what was attractive to us about this is that we could make a romantic comedy that really didn't follow the rules of romantic comedies, and that really, I mean, one of the challenges with this film is that it's hard to categorize. It's not a typical romantic comedy. It's not even a typical comedy. It really goes to places that you don't expect, so... Um, yeah, I think it's more of a love story than a romantic comedy, but, but it is hard to describe it or, you know, to categorize it. Can I ask how you guys work together as, as co-directors? Is there a division of labor or do you do everything as, uh, with one voice? We really do everything, uh, you know, together and as one voice. We're sort of always, you know, um, like Tweedledee and Tweedledum all over the set. I, you know, it, it's not as efficient as maybe it could be, but I think that's why we do it. We like the discussion, the ongoing discussion, and, um, you know, we really like collaborating. So, and on every aspect, every detail of the movie. Yeah, I mean, you have to love what you do because with the two of us, it's there all the time. If we don't like what we're doing, we usually don't get along very well. <laughs> if we like it, then we get along. Um, was it challenging to have a lead actress who was also the screenwriter? We, we were concerned that, um, that Zoe needed to let go of the script at a certain point and, and really be the actress. Um, but we worked with her for nine months, and it was very clear early on that we all wanted to make the same movie and that she would be ready to give the reins to us. You know, there's always the, the issue of, you know, what the script is and then what is the movie that's going to emerge from that script. And I think that Zoe was great at, at letting go. Yeah, and by the time we started shooting, really all her writing duties were done, you know, so she could fully embody that role, which was plenty challenging for her. So, um, Of course, uh, Steve Coogan is worshipped as a god here in the UK. Um, what was he like to work with? He is a god. <laughs> yes, yeah, Steve I mean, Coogan he's... is a god, and, and we are, you know, priests in the temple. Uh, you know, he, he brings so much, and, and we wrote him a letter when we made the offer, just saying, you're the only person we can imagine in this role, and he w was, and, and um, he was very kind to come and do the film, and, you know, and he just, you know, he's just stepped right into the role. That's what, when you don't have a lot of time with actors, you don't have prep time, you don't have rehearsal time, it's so important that you cast it right, and it just makes your job so much easier. And he totally understood this character, and uh, I think enjoyed playing him. You've made some of the, the iconic music videos, but your films are not like music videos. Yeah. But there's still, but there's still always a musical element. Can you talk a bit about the soundtrack for this one? Well, music is, is always is very important. We, we cut our movies without music for the most part. We get the scenes worked up without music. But we showed Nick Urata the first cut of the film with very little music in it. And um, he just started writing these pieces that really felt like they captured the, the kind of spirit of the film. And we, we liked the idea of the, the score being sort of big. And while the movie was treated very simply and a little more dry, the music could sort of take on that fantastic 
element. And, um, you know, it just, it was really fun. We worked for about four months with Nick on the score, which is unusual to have a composer be that involved for such a long period of time. And Yeah, I mean, we had a 60-piece orchestra, so it was a big deal for a small movie. But um, I love the score. There, there's actually a soundtrack album, which hopefully you'll get. They'll get that to you. Cause it's not your typical kind of indie movie, catchy tunes you know, kind yeah, of I mean, score. We hate it when the lyrics come in and tell you what a scene is about. So we were really excited at just this big emotional orchestral score, almost operatic. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little bit of melodrama. You know, it's, it's pushing it pretty far, but we, we liked doing that. So. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you.